All right guys, welcome back to episode two of the XC build. Now in episode one, you saw us find the car that we decided to do for this build. Now it was a 78 XC Falcon. We stripped the thing completely down and we've got it down into a bare body, pretty much subframe chassis. Now in this episode, what we're gonna do is start looking at building our own chassis. And I'm actually gonna be using these diffs. Now these are a GU Patrol diff, believe it or not, but we're gonna completely strip them and make them fit our custom chassis for the XC. Chassis time. Believe it or not, this is my new chassis. So I pretty much just got some 50 by 100 mil RHS and I'm gonna to attempt to build a chassis. Never done it before, so you're learning at the same time as me. I pretty much did a bit of a rough guesstimate measuring up. Um, see, the problem with the XC is it's, it's a subframe. It didn't have a full <laughs> chassis. So ideally I wanted like a car that had a full chassis I could take the body off and just adapt to what's already there but because it's a subframe I need to build a full chassis and then make some body mounts some rubbers and then drop this whole thing on top of it when it's done so the plan is to build this out on the floor measuring up against the body and then put the diffs under it and have it as a rolling chassis ready to go and then just drop the car on top so that's the idea so I've got a couple of the main cuts so we've got a 200 2000 mil or 200 centimeter piece as the main runners and then there's a couple of cuts at the back so i've done a little bit of guesstimation on the rear and i think i'll try and just cut what i've got on here playing with the angles it's the main the hardest thing with this is, is with the drop saw i need to make sure i get those cuts right so with the angles line up perfectly to be able to weld it properly um, and then we'll be sort of fish plating on top of that so i'm going to try with the back and and if my calculations are close enough and the back looks pretty good. I'll just continue that method on with the front. But if it doesn't work, then I'm gonna to have to sort of do piece by piece, like put the, put the rails up, build the next section. If there's a little bit of kind of inconsistency or some errors in that, I need to kind of adjust for that for the next section and just sort of build piece by piece. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do right now and see if this chassis comes together. Oh my God, it's taking me back to high school. <laughs> maths. I was meant to be good at maths, but maybe I'm not. This is super dodgy. So I've like measured the car and made sure that it's plumb using this. What is this called? A yeah, a, a level, <laughs> a level. <laughs> okay, and then a couple of, all right. So what I've got, this is going back to my trigonometry days. So we've got an angle going up like that. What do I know? I know that the height between the two is 200 and the length of that piece is 400. So. Sokotoa, do you remember that? So Sokotoa, or adjacent and hypotenuse. So cos theta will be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 200 over 400, which is 0.5, which means the angle theta is the cos inverse of 0.5, which means on here, cos inverse 0.5, hopefully this is in degrees. 60, that's a nice number. That's not the angle we need because I need the opposite side of that angle. So I'll put that in there. 180 degrees, so it'll be 180 degrees. Take that 60. Now I want to match that cut on two pieces of angle, two pieces of RHS, so 120 divided with 60 again. So 60 degrees is the cut I need on that. Now if I go cut that and it's completely wrong, I'm putting it in the bin. I really need to buy a protractor, eh? That'd make things so much easier. So what you see in here is finally the first cut after like half an hour of setting up. Measure three times, cut once. It's about 60 degrees to you. No idea. So the reason I'm spending so much time making sure these cuts are right because if you have a square 90 degree cut and try and put a bend up to it, you see they don't quite meet. See how there's a gap at the top? Because the length is actually different. If I get the bottom lined up, see how the top doesn't line up? That's why you need to put the angle on both sides of your cut. So you can't just go a square cut and then try and weld this on the other side because they're going to be different lengths and it'll look like shit. One down, 100 to go. <laughs> God damn it.
All right, so one thing I just wanted to mention is the way that I'm doing these welds. Because it's a chassis, whenever there's a joint, I'm gonna do a fish plate on there. So to do that, you need to kind of grind back the weld so you can actually put the plate on there. Now, if you can imagine when you're doing a join and you do a butt up join, when you weld it, it kind of, it has nothing to fill. And then when you grind it back, you potentially grind all the weld back to where you almost lose that join. So what I'm actually doing is grinding back a bit of an angle on each join, which causes a cavity. So when I weld it, it essentially fills that um, cavity so that when it grinds back and I put the fish plate on, there's still weld attaching the two bits of metal together. So that's just a little detail that you wouldn't normally do, but on something like a chassis, you wanna make sure that those welds penetrate properly so your chassis doesn't snap in half. And I don't even know if this is the right thing to do. Comment down below if you've got a better way because I'm not a chassis expert. But then in saying that, what are we in? March, the car's probably built already, so it's probably too late. But chuck it down there anyway and I'll see you for next time. I reckon 80, 90% of the weld quality is done by the way you clean it. That's this week's Top Tip 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 Trip Chicken Tuesday. Tech Tip and Tech and Tip Tuesday. That was like an actual segment of mine. That was a thing? It was a thing. What? Ah. You almost seem like a weld though, huh? So by doing that, it's pretty much filled that weld there. So a lot of the penetration has gone into that V that I created when I was grinding back. Um, so doing that the whole way around, now I want to go back and grind that section off to fish plate it. Um, it's going to keep that strength there. So that's how we're doing the chassis. Welcome to 5 News. I'm Tom Griffith. I'm Helen Higsby. And tonight, YouTubers gone rogue. Is Bitcoin really bad for your health? But first, we're going to cross to the Sunshine Coast live with Sam and his very special Land Cruiser. Good afternoon, Tom. Sorry about the weather out here, mate, but behind me is this one of one Land Cruiser. Yes, Sam, it sure is a piece of art. Uh, so generous of you to be giving it away. What? Hang on, it, it sounds like you said I'm giving it away. I'm, I'm giving it away. I'm not giving it away. Where are the keys? Give me the keys back. We're not giving it away. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about the car and why you've decided to give it away? Uh, are you there, Sam? Sorry, we seem to be having some technical difficulties there, but um, I cannot believe he's giving this thing away. He has just finished the paint job. That motor is something else as well. That is just incredible. It's useless bloody connection, I can't hear. Margaret, where's Margaret? Margaret! Anyway, if you're interested in uh, entering that 80 series, the link is down below. Uh, hope Sam's all right. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah. I think he's doing all right. Anyway, come on for a sir. You better get back to the hospital. All right, so it's a few days later, or let's be honest, it's a few weeks later. Um, now, I've worded up all the chassis, started doing a bit of the gusseting and that. I've got some fish plates being laser cut as well to put on the sides, so that sorts them out. Now, I've started to sort of plan out where everything's gonna sit. Now, this is roughly gonna be where the ride height is of the chassis. So with this drop box, I'm gonna start looking at doing these, this four link for the diff. So I've got the rear diff all stripped, the front diff is stripped as well. So I'm pretty much placing it on the ground, working out where the diffs are gonna sit. Um, in comparison to the tire height there. So that's where the disc's gonna end up. And then over here, we've got all of the four link gear. So I've gone to Dave from Design Fab. Now he makes all of these gussets and links and joins and himes and all bits and pieces. So what I've got, what we're essentially doing is like a four link for the rear. Now being a patrol diff, um, he does have a section which I've already started welding on there um, over the pumpkin for the four link. Now there's a couple of tabs there. Um, some himes for the top arms and then they go to these chassis mounts which have these braces that go roughly like that. I think it's going to end up like that. 
Um, now they also come with a few different mounting positions to put that link so you can get it all right. Um, now the lowers, this is, this is a section that's going to be welded to the drop box, which I've already started cutting up this one. It's going to be sort of notched in to match that drop box. Um, some larger himes there, which run down to the diff, which has a couple of braces and then the tabs as well. Now, there's a bit of mass and a bit of geometry to setting up these four links. I don't want to say or quote it here because I'm not like, it's not what I'm good at. And I don't want to say something here and then you guys go and match it and it's sort of wrong. So I'm sort of learning as I'm going, but um, Dave sort of steered me in the right direction with a bit of the mathematics. So if you really want to do your own four link, I recommend you give him a buzz. Um, so he is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to that sort of stuff. So he knows, he builds a lot of his race cars, all that sort of stuff. But for what I'm doing with this, it's not super crucial. So we've just set it up. So it sort of rides nice, but there's, it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's not set up for a particular style of driving. Um, it's just set up to sort of make sure this thing sits good on the street. Not the street, because it's not gonna be a street car. So what I'm gonna do now is pretty much tack all of this stuff up on the diff, spend a couple of days doing all the mass, tacking it up. Um, these links, you can just use a bit of PVC pipe, a um, bit of just alley pipe, whatever, something with thin wall, just to get the diff to cycle through um, the full sweep of what the suspension is going to do from full bump to full droop. Make sure everything's sitting right. You're looking at the roll of the diff. You're looking at your pinion angles. Make sure nothing binds up. And once I'm happy with that, um, send this stuff away. Dave's going to make some proper links for me. And then I can fully weld all the stuff on the chassis and the diffs. And then we'll start looking at the front end. So that's the plan for now. A bit of work to do, let's go. <laughs> So, I've just had these fish plates come back from laser cutting. Now, this got them sent down and roughly cut out. I did have to clean them up with a grinder, but I just want to quickly talk a little bit about the fish plates and why I'm doing it. So, obviously, back when we made the chassis, I, I showed you that I kind of notched those um, weld joins in, like V'd them in so the pool actually filled the weld. Because what I've done here is had to grind these back flush. Now, wherever the welds are on any bend, join, whatever on a chassis, it creates a weak point. So, what the fish plate does, I've just used some five or six mil plate and you actually weld that over the join, but where the join is, it's solid. So we're gonna be welding fully around this and also these circles in here to improve the strength um, inside and out on all those sections of the rail. And that's what will give this thing strength and like stop that chassis from cracking and splitting. It's kind of what these do on the bends, um, but it's doing it in more of a kind of horizontal sense as well. So I'm just tacking them on for now until we get everything sorted out. And then I'm gonna actually take the chassis off the hoist, flip it up and weld them properly. So I'm not having to weld upside down. Um, and that will ensure it, it really gets stuck well to this and creates the strength that I need. Because let's be honest, this thing may just fall in half when I drive it. So this will give us half of a hope that this thing will actually stay in one piece. So I spent the afternoon just tacking all this stuff up. I got a little bit carried away with the bottom links, so <laughs> they got fully welded, whoops. But these top ones here I've just tacked on. Ended up having to um, get a 120 by 150 plate just to lower it down a bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is, if all the measurements work out, I'll actually trim that bottom section off, brace it to the bottom of the chassis rail just to get it down a bit lower. So like I said at the start, the mathematics of this is a little bit crucial, so I've tried to get them as good as I can. Um, and at least here we've got the three options on those top links. Now on the diff end, um, due to the tie size that I do want to run, these bottom 
mounts have pretty much been set where they need to be and the top ones need to go off that. So I may have to space these up a bit. So I haven't tacked these on just yet. So the next thing for me is to just wait for a couple more of the bottom heim joints to come in the mail and then I can link that bottom up. And then from the top there, I can pretty much just put a small tack on this and just see, like I said, you got to see that sweep. So I'll get some links made up and just lower probably the chassis down and um, see how the diff behaves and whether it wants to roll or whether it's pretty stable and then we'll know if it's happy and sweet, we'll fully weld everything up.